Hey guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back, welcome back. Today, I thought I'd challenge myself to make a book using only a cheap sketchbook pad for the pages and the chipboard on the back for the cover boards. The first step was to take it all apart and remove the sheets of paper and the chipboard from the metal ring. Next, I trimmed the perforated edges from the chipboard and also the pages. And because I am apparently a glutton for punishment, I decided to deckle the edges of the paper by ripping every single one of them by hand. And there are 30 of them, in case you were wondering. I wasn't feeling the stark white, so I figured some coffee staining would help. Um, adding a pinch of baking soda to the instant coffee and water helps protect the paper by neutralizing the acid. I'm not the kind of person that can be bothered with drying all of these papers in the oven. I just dip the papers and lay them to dry out overnight. The next morning, I stack them all together and put them in the nipping press for about an hour, and they came out pretty flat and ready to use. With thicker paper, sometimes it's difficult to fold several at the same time to make a signature while keeping them all straight and even. What I usually do instead is fold them individually, but only lightly crease the folded edge. Once I decide how many pages I want in each signature, I can stack the papers together and then I can reinforce the fold. I decided to make signatures with three folded papers for each one. So there were 30 pieces of paper total. So each signature has three pieces of paper folded and that made 10 signatures. The next thing I did was measure the chipboard to find the center so I could cut it into two pieces. Then I used one of the folded pages to help me figure out how wide I wanted the front and back covers and then I was able to trim those down. On a whim, I decided that rounded corners would be the way to go. Yeah, I don't know. So I rounded one of the papers to use as a guide to mark the cover boards so that I could round them to be the same shape. Then I had to use a little bit of fine grit sandpaper to smooth out the corners that I just trimmed. Since the signatures were already collated and stacked together, I was able to round the corners pretty easily at this point.
The next step was to bind the signatures together to make the text block. I took a scrap of paper and marked four evenly spaced holes. Then I used that as a template to punch the sewing stations into each signature fold. Yeah, sorry about that. The other video is linked below if you want to see how I stitched the text block together. At this point, my brain was pretty mushy. That's what income tax prep will do to you. <laughs> and I should have added the end papers before gluing and backing, but no, no I didn't. I totally spaced it and glued up the spine and added a scrap of cotton fabric. I decided a bookmark would look pretty spiffy, so I glued to the spine a length of twisted butcher's twine and also some headbands to finish that off. They really are a nice way to finish off the text block because it kind of hides those top folded edges in the text block that you really don't want to see. This is where I went, oh no, the end papers. So I grabbed a couple of sheets of paper from that sketch pad, rounded the corners, folded them in half, and then I attached one to the front page and another to the back page. You'll notice that I'm only brushing glue on about a quarter inch of that front and back page next to the spine edge. The next day, I started the cover by painting the chipboard black. and decided that it looked a little too new. So I started sanding it off and that revealed some of the chipboard underneath. I should add that after this point, after this paint dried, I did spray a light coat of sealer on each cover board and let it dry completely. After all that work, you might be wondering why I'm shaving off a strip of the painted chipboard but I promise it will all make sense later. Next, I marked a rectangle on each cover to use as a guide to add a frame embellishment with gold paint. This is the top to a pencil sharpener that I'm dabbing some of the paint onto. I thought an oval would look nice on the front cover. Of course, this also looked a little too new. So out came the sandpaper again. To cover the spine, I decided to gold foil on some black book tape. I used the backing from some label paper to stick the book tape to so I could handle it without it sticking to everything. I measured the width of the text block spine and added 10 millimeters to allow for two 5 millimeter hinge gaps. This totaled a width of 40 millimeters, and that's how far the book covers would need to be spaced apart. I trimmed the book tape so that it would be wide enough to leave this 40 millimeters between the covers and then overlap about a half an inch onto each cover. 
and that's why I shaved the half inch strips from the front of the book covers so that the tape would be level and even with the rest of the book cover. So I take off just the backing on the back of the tape to reveal those half inch overlaps and I stick those to the front and back cover. Then I remove the center of the backing and lay down a strip of tissue paper and that seals in the sticky part. This strip of cardstock is from a manila file folder. It's the same height as the cover boards and the same width as the spine of the text block. It gets glued to the center of the space between the covers, leaving those five millimeter gaps on either side. Then all that's left is to remove the backing on the tape and fold the book tape over and down onto the inside of the book cover. Next, I place the text block into the cover and get it centered where I want it. And then I carefully set it down and open one side of the cover. It's kind of hard to see in the video, but there's a piece of clear transparency film under that fabric flap to protect the paper while I brush glue on it. Then I close the cover and use my fingers and a bone folder to reinforce that hinge gap space between the spine edge and the chipboard. The book gets flipped over and the same thing is done on the other side. These are book cover boards that I have attached knitting needles to. I use them to sandwich over the book. The knitting needles sink down into that hinge gap area to help it stay formed while the glue dries. Once that's dry, I place the clear film under the paste down side of the end paper and brush on the glue. Then either fold the cover down to stick the end paper to it, or you could use your hands to fold the end paper up and over onto the inside of the cover while it's still open and smooth it down and then close it. And the other side is done the same way. The book is left to dry with clear film inside to protect the text block from the moisture in the adhesive. And that my friends is all she wrote. I hope you were entertained by this process. While the book isn't fancy or complicated by any means, it proves you don't need much to build a book from scratch. Any supplies I used in this video will be added to either the Booksmithables or Tools Amazon favorites list, and that'll be linked below the video. Thank you all for joining me today. It was great hanging out with you, and I will see you all really, really soon in the next video. Bye, guys.